What's going on guys? It's Kyle here with Gnarly Knives. What are we going to be doing today? As you can see, I'm um, going to be taking apart the Buck Spitfire. I thought I'd take you guys along. Um, this is the knife I did the most recent review on. And I thought it would be kind of cool to take you guys with this journey here. Um, see how at least I take my knives apart or at least what I use. Um, I don't really don't use anything fancy or special. The screwdriver, the bits and everything are actually a site I got from, um, a set I got from Walmart. You can actually even see here, I think this was like 14 or 15 bucks. Um, probably gonna be upgrading fairly soon. These bits are pretty soft. These are the ones that come with it. And then I actually ordered some because the T6s on these I keep breaking and they just keep getting mushed and yeah, you know, they're one of the ones I use the most and I even lose them. So I just been swapping them out, ordering um, a little bit better quality bits. So we're just gonna be using two with this today, so far it seems. So we're gonna have a T9 for the pivot and then the T6 is gonna be for the body screws. Um, we'll be probably randomly points where I'm talking more or less than others. Uh, this is just kind of, like I said, experiment and seeing how it goes. Um, also, I will tend to use our Q-tips for getting into little spots. A lot of times I'll use them and clean out on the scales and on the blade where the pivot goes through. And then, of course, just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I mean, any kind is fine. This is just what I happen to have. The 91%, it's pretty strong. It works well. I like it. Um, and then Loctite, where we're putting it back together. And then this is just what I like to use. There are a lot of companies that make all different sorts of uh, blade lube for the knives. To be honest, this is the only one I've ever really tried out. It works well. I haven't found the need to change it up. I'm not saying I'll never try others, but this works really well and it lasts a long time. This bottle, it's funny, it's really not all that big, but I think it was like 10 bucks and it was filled right up to where the shoulder is when I got it. And then I was looking before the video, it's down to here now. And I've been using this bottle for like two years and you know, I've probably done over a hundred disassemblies and st just, you know, using it um, just with knives. And then, cause I use it too, just even when I get something new and just put extra oil in it. And so that's a good way to put it. I probably serve it, you know, definitely with all, everything, well over a hundred knives using this. So I see many more years, you know, it'll probably last me 10 years. Um, but I'll try others at some point, but it works really well. I'm pretty happy with it. It's um, definitely a thinner lubricant. I know they have, you can get all different viscosities in general, but this one here works really well for me. Um, even, you know, with ball bearing knives and stuff, I find it works very well. So these are just it, uh, my basic tools. And then I'm gonna be doing a couple extra little things with this if you remember from my review if you've seen it there's some spots here on the blade opening and uh, just a few other spots in general where it is pretty rough and um especially the one on the blade i mean it feels like you could almost cut yourself um, and especially too because i'm planning on eventually giving this to my kid so i don't want her to cut her finger open and not even have the blade open yet um so i'll be using this probably once i get the knife apart and it's just some 1000 grit sandpaper also got at Walmart in their automotive section, if anybody is curious. So I'll just start, I'm not sure if this has Loctite on it already. So we'll see how well it comes apart. All right, sweet, so that's just right out. Now I can see they use a little bit of Loctite. Yeah, that's another thing too. So you can see here, I'll try to show you in the light. Um, but it's blue. Yeah, you want to use the blue Loctite. It's the medium. If um, you haven't used it before, you want to definitely use the blue, not the red. The red is the permanent. Um, and then here, just to pop the pivot out, I'll just do that. I'll just take and just kind of... Oh, there we go. Of course, now I got that a little stuck. But there we go. And actually, I forgot what I should have done was I should have waited because then it popped this up. That's not a big deal. Um, so let's take apart the rest and of course put everything in spot together. We'll go back after everything's taken apart and just kind of wipe them out quick. So I'm going to switch to the T6. 
And I apologize, it looks a little awkward just because I have the camera right in front of me. I figure as if I do this more, it'll be, um, I'll get more comfortable with it, more used to it. So here we go. It's one of the T6s and then it just pops right out. That's kind of cool. I kind of like how these, kind of like how these work here. And I'm noticing too, it seems like you want to hold this because it wants to slide out. So you want to keep your finger along the back of the screw on the opposite side because it just wants to pop out on you. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really matter as long as the right general size one's going in the right general spot. At least I have not found it to be an issue. Put it up here. Spacer. There's the lever and the rod. Oh, okay. So it looks like it does have washers. They're little nylon washers. That's kind of a bummer. That's all right. Oh, they're super thin. So you want to be very careful with those. These I do like to make sure I put them in the right spot. I think it. Oh, where is it? Because oh, you don't want to bend them either. You got to be careful. Here we go. That's the right side. And then this is the left side. So we'll do it like that. So right, left. All right. So yeah, I mean, it's new. It needs a little bit of dirt. Nothing really. If anything, most of it's just from being in the pocket. So let's line everything up here. And then I'm just going to leave the... Uh, clip on it's already in the spot i wanted and it doesn't help hold the knife together in any way like sometimes they do so these we'll come back to in a bit and then we just have our lock set up here there's the lever that holds it into place the spring and then a little backspacer and i think i think this might be plastic i mean it doesn't matter i'm just curious I don't think it's metal. Oh, maybe. Who knows? So that'll all get wiped down. Then we got the washers, all the screws, the pivot, two scales, a lever, spring, backspacer, oh. and then the blade. So that's kind of cool. So then if anybody's ever curious, if you haven't seen a part how a back lock works, so when you open it, it just locks into place there and then when you press oops, when you press down you can close it and then it looks pretty much like that when it's inside the handle and it'll just lock right in pretty cool so oh and then i forgot to mention too also a paper towel is pretty nice but i'm gonna wait to clean it i'm gonna sand this down first because i'll get little bits and particles all over everything and I don't want to do that after I clean it because I'll just have to clean it again so it doesn't need to be anything crazy definitely want to be careful you don't want to scratch up the blade yeah it's actually already starting to feel a little better it's gonna need some work but You just want to kind of go all directions, make sure you're kind of getting everything. That's definitely a lot better. It was just like, I guess, from however they drilled it or milled it out. Uh, just, you know, probably just left a bit of a burr. 
But yeah, so you definitely the top is definitely where you want to get it the most because that's where you're going to be coming into the most contact with it with by opening it. Definitely a nice difference there. And then we'll just do the side quick. And this is the opposite side, but if I hand it to a left-handed person, I don't have to worry about them potentially cutting or injuring themselves just trying to open the knife. So I just want to be careful. I slipped out a couple times. Yeah, there's a couple little spots, but that's actually, I think that's about got it there. And yeah, and that took what? Maybe two minutes. And it's cool because then that piece, I only use a small section. I'll throw that in my kit and you'll be able to use that. And the jimping's not bad. That doesn't need it. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with it because it is pretty sharp on here. But we can kind of experiment. I just feel like it's going to take the anodization off. Doing like the inside scale, see what it, see if any comes off. Cause you won't see this while it's in the blade. So I mean, it does a little bit, but actually not that much. So maybe we'll just give it a quick sand. And here you really want to be careful, so you don't, um, you don't want to scratch up, but. This is definitely going to make a big difference. But then it also comes to what I was talking about a bit during the review. You know, I mean, this is a $80 knife. Like, yes, it's definitely cheaper than a lot of other knives with these materials. But at what point is it where you have to put a lot of extra work into it? And... And it just, that's something I guess, you know, it's more up to the buyer if they don't mind putting a little extra work in. I mean, because you are still getting this, you know, at least, you know, $40, $50 cheaper than most knives in the steel. I mean, of course, there are other ones. But even with just these materials, you know, that's why the, um, um, the Benchmade 940 came into my head thinking about because it's, you know, very much the same materials. Uh, stay in. So is that something that you're willing to put a little extra work in? Is it that big of a deal? I mean, I suppose it's not that big of a deal, but I mean, it also is an excuse for me to get an extra couple videos out about it. But if I didn't do YouTube, maybe I'd find this a little more annoying. It definitely feels a lot better. So flip this around. Because, yeah, I was on the inside of the handle, too, where you wrap your fingers and stuff. That you could feel that it was fairly sharp. Nothing was as bad as the, um, the thumb opening on the blade. That definitely was the sharpest. But it was still a little rough in some other spots. But I think overall this is going to be fine. I don't think you're going to really notice. I mean, I can see a couple spots where I removed more of the uh, anodization than I probably should have. A couple, like, little bare spots, but they're right in the corners. And it's probably something only I'm going to notice. And then just as it gets used more, it's just going to wear anyway. You know, just like in my 940, and that, I don't even carry that as much as a lot of my other knives. But, you know, when I first got it, I carried it for like a month or so straight. And it definitely showed some signs of wear. I mean, a lot of it too, because, you know, my pocket that I keep my pocket knives in. I also have, you know, keys, light or other stuff. So, yeah, it definitely gets scratched up that way. But not even just the scratches I'm talking, just, um, you know, just wear. Like where instead of getting scratched off just from you know, spots where when I'm holding it or using it. 
you could definitely see where it was starting to wear. So this will do the same. To me, it's just character. I'm not going as nuts. These are still kind of sharp, but I just don't want to remove too much of it yet. I mean, I'm sure as I use the knife a lot more and it starts wearing, I won't care. And then I'll probably, you know, maybe one of the next couple times that I disassemble this, I'll just say, screw it and get some, maybe even like 800 grit and just really take these down, even with the um, anodization and just say, screw it. Just add more of uniqueness, I guess. That seems to be doing pretty good. But yeah, you can just do this with anything. I mean, if it's doing it good with aluminum, if, you know, you have a piece of G10 that's kind of scratchy, I mean, it'll take it right down. And then, you know, the coarser you use of uh, sandpaper, the quicker it'll be. I was just the thousand, because it was just something I grabbed first. I think even when I did the video, I had said something about maybe using... Um, like 2500 grit which i actually have some in the package over there but i'm glad i just ended up going with a thousand i don't want to sit here too long oh, get this too a little bit but that's interesting but it's just everywhere it's just such sharp edges on it and there's some on the inside i'm not going to worry about that where it's in the handle all right, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Especially with this. As I mean, you can definitely feel the, you know, edge, if you will, but it's, it's not near as sharp as it was. Just give it another little. So now we can start wiping everything down. We'll put those in a little section that's already nice and clean. And then we'll be able to just start putting it back together. So where should we start? How about, let's wipe the scales down. So I'm gonna open this. Uh, my first time using this bottle. Into, especially with all that sanding we're going to want to make sure we get all the stuff off so I'll just end up wiping the whole scale down make sure I get any dust I mean we will go back to it in a minute so I can clean out the pivot area see a little bit of dirt doesn't really pick up on here but you can see like when I look at it off camera you can see little teeny teeny bits of little red flakes what else I'll do another clean spot yeah we'll just get everything wiped down then we'll go back so we'll get the lever backspacer why not It's just, it's just a good feeling. I, I always love that feeling after I, I take apart a knife and clean it. It's like that feeling I get when, um, you know, like right after I do an oil change or whatever, the first like week or two I'm driving the car after that. Um, and it's not even the, you know, doing the oil change part, but it's just that feeling like, ah, it's just got fresh oil in it. I don't know. I guess that's kind of how I look at it too. It's like, ah, fresh, clean knife. That's pretty good. And then we'll get the other screws I'm not going to worry too much about. But I'm going to wipe down the pivot screw a little bit. Actually, one thing I like to do to kind of help get some... I mean, if you're really determined, you can sit there and get all the old Loctite off. I don't really worry about it too much. But I'll hold it in the paper towel with some of the rubbing alcohol. And then I'll just twist it. And I'll like squeeze it while I do it. Not to like where it hurts, but and then I'll go back the other way. I'll change spots. 
and this is probably just doing it more than it needs but see look a whole bunch of the loctite came off and there's still some on that is quite all right yeah she has a good spot just so it's just more fresh stuff because i noticed too over um at times when you put too much it just gets all gunked up and as i still it's funny i i've really cut back on how much loctite i'll use I, i've definitely learned the lesson a little goes a long way I haven't learned that with when it comes to using the uh, knife lube or the knife pivot lube or whatever because I use way too much. And it's funny because that just, I feel like, further emphasize how long that little bottle lasts. But here we go. I'm gonna call that good. Let's see, look, get those little bits of paper towel out. But, you know, those were pretty much all filled up with Loctite and they now no longer are. And I'll just do a quick one with the, um, just give them a quick wipe, the scale screws. I don't even always do this, I just figure. Is it something I do sometimes? I think it's good practice, or a good practice to be in. Just kind of neatens them up. And I think, too, it definitely helps in the long run, like I was saying, with getting all gunked up with the, um, with the Loctite. It's funny, I have some knives where they just have so much Loctite in them, I, I don't even put any more in anymore. I mean, I guess I could just clean them out, um, and then I could put more in, but it's funny, I don't have them come loose anymore. I think just the Loctite, there's just so much in there, it's just always, um... It just always holds it in place, even when it's old Loctite. All right, so now let's do this quick. So what I'll even do too, sometimes we even have to do this, you can just poke it right in the bottle. I just like having a little, oh, as I spill it everywhere. But I like just having like a little dip tray, I guess. And I'll just do that, I'll just take just dip it in because there's already a piece of dirt on there. Very good. And I'll just kind of clean it through. And we already wiped this down, so it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, I can't really see anything on there. Once the knife starts getting used a lot more, then you'll definitely notice it. Yeah, I don't think there's really much there. There might be some in here. Because that's what I like to really clean out. There we go, see? I'll use the other side. Oh, these ones are kind of weird. I think I've seen them like this before with the points. Let's see how that looks now. Maybe a couple little spots, but there's a good amount of stuff in there. And I'll just kind of clean this off. I'll use the paper towel to actually really wipe it down, but then we'll just have to clean oh, the little, uh, the little, what are they called? The little washers, little plastic washers. Just blow this up. <laughs> Get all the crud out of it. There you go. And you can see a little outline from the washers. So how are we gonna do this? Because it makes it a little bit more of a pain when this so thin, because you really gotta be careful. But This way, um, I just have to just say screw it, pop them both in. And 
Let's just kind of get any grease and stuff off of them. pretty clean now. I just really wish they would wash the uh, metal washers. I don't understand why not. And for an extra few bucks. But, all right. So I think we'll probably start from this side. So the pivot, so these are, the pivot's like a D shape. So it only slides in one way. So I just when you're putting it in, you just want to make sure. And then what I'll do is I'll just put a little bit of oil. Well, that should probably even too much. So I usually like to do oil washer, oil blade. I need that first washer on. All right, that's on. I'll just put a little dab because it's going to leach over from the other side. Then, oh, there's the blade. The blade, I'm going to start with it in the open position. And I'll probably move around as I'm putting this all together. So I'm going to pop one of these in too. So I think I'm going to need all of this stuff. Let me get the other washer on first. It's too much. Perfect. Let's see, these are a little D shaped as well, I think. Yep. That's fine. All right, so next we're gonna want the back spacer. So you guys can see. I just forget which way this goes in. Ah, uh, yeah, I think it was like that. Nope. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how it was. So now that we got the lube on, I'm gonna feed this through. Hold that in place. And then we're gonna get the scale. I just forget, I'm gonna just put a little extra on. So what I'm gonna do to try to hold, because this keep sliding out like it just did. I'm gonna just say, screw it for right this second. Oop, oop, thing is flying around. Oh, that's why I hate backlog 
knives. I promise I'm much better at putting knives back together than I am showing currently. See the washer slid up a little bit. I mean, you might not be able to see because it it's like clear. You can kind of see it there. Just gonna use the little screw, uh, the little torque bit. Oops, just put that back into place. Just gonna be mindful and keep my finger holding this one in because I don't want to have to keep fishing it through. So what I'm going to do is just take a little drop. Ooh, see, that's even too much. So I'll just take a little bit for the other screws. So they see that was enough for all the screws. You just need a little bit. You do not need much. So here we go. And I'm not even gonna tighten this all the way, but just so I can get the screw started. There we go. And that's, I'm gonna need a little bit to play with that, but that's all right, I'm not gonna worry about that now. gonna get these ones started and I'm not tightening them all the way just getting them more or less in place so I don't have to keep holding everything in like an awkward way all right that's more than good enough and then this one here there we go and these were all those little like D-shaped um, screws. So here we go. Actually, this bottom one, I'll probably just tighten that one right up. Actually, you might be able to fix some of the issues that we had where it seemed like I just need something long I can poke in there. Or maybe I can line up because I remember I was talking about there were like gaps between everything, but I wonder if since everything's loose right now, maybe that's how they were tight and just out of whack. But if I can get something, I can just kind of push it up. And, uh, oh. Right here, I've got a couple of clothes pins. These things are all over the place here. Yeah, okay. Oh my God. Well, there we go, that just happened live. That was one of the new bits. Damn, those weren't cheap either. Make sure it's not in the pivot, I don't think it is. But now I gotta try and find the bag. And just remember to be careful. Because I think those ones I got because they're hardened more. And I thought, yeah, I guess they're harder. They're more brittle, right? Just like knives. Must have been a bad heat treat. <laughs> well, I guess it's good I got a, like, eight pack of them. So let's see. Let's make sure everything is all lined up. That's tight. That is tight. I want to see if I can kind of push up the... I think that's just kind of how it is on this here. All right. No 
now he's got to fix this here. How are we going to, well, let's start by loosening the pivot. I didn't even tighten it that much. Oh, it's actually like not even tightened at all. All right. do some there we go I had to do a little off camera oh, did I tighten these too much now That's pretty good yeah I think I don't know it just Is that knife, it is like hardly tightened. All right, so let's loosen everything back up. Something's not right. But what's good is recognizing that instead of pressing on But I'll tell you what though, tighten, uh, grinding this out or sanding it down rather, that made a hell of a difference. What is loose in here? Yeah, you gotta mess with the pivot again. Well, anybody that's still watching, you know, thanks for hanging on this long. I have no idea how long this is going to go. But I'll keep going until either the battery or the uh, video runs out. Because it's definitely a lot tighter than it was. I just don't want it open that much. But you can see how it's moving so much. So, I mean... if maybe I did put it back upside down. <coughs> Let's try taking it apart and we'll flip around. I wonder if that's what happened. Actually, let's put that back in for now. Why did I do that? I did it on the last one. Okay. Just to hold it in place for now. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm actually going to leave one side together. So I'm going to just try to do this just flip it around I think that's how it was supposed to be that feels bright that feels like there's a lot more tension oh yeah let's make sure the oh washer's still in place sweet Little 
loose now a little bit. No, it just doesn't want to move. Now. Get the pivot and then we'll see how everything's looking. All right, so the lock definitely feels a lot better. centering the really because the tolerance is so tight so I mean what I can tell so far it definitely feels a bit smoother getting the oil in it oh, I'm sorry guys getting that oil and everything in there and cleaning out I mean it's definitely stiffer opening it so I mean that's just I'm gonna have to keep playing with the adjustments um, but that'll probably add another like 10 minutes to the video. <laughs> um, but like I said, it's so much smoother now. Just in here by sanding those down. <coughs> Excuse me. Getting those sanded down. It feels just the action feels smoother. I mean, like I said, it's definitely a little stiffer. I got to play with the tightness on everything. Um, but we got that figured out. Is before I think I just had that upside down. It just felt really weird. But it definitely feels smoother. It was a little gritty before, but now it isn't. All of this feels better. Even the um, jimping. I mean, you're probably doing a little more sanding on the top here. But down here, oh, it's totally different. Because you could feel the sharp edges in here and here. But honestly, even looking at it after sanding everything, I'm not really seeing much of, um, or any really of the spots where I went a little too far and got it down. You could start to see the metal. So I think that must've been more on the inside, but it feels really good now. It definitely feels a little more comfortable just by doing those few things. So yeah, this video is going on 45 minutes, so I won't make it go on anymore. Um, so yeah, thanks for journeying along if you've been here for the full going on 45 minutes. Um, I know this was my first video doing it like this. That's probably just kind of throwing me off by trying to film. And you know, like half the time I'm looking through the camera to make sure I'm trying to keep things in view. But uh, that's enough excuses, I guess. Um, but if you guys want to see me do more just disassembly and maintenance videos, I promise they will not be this long. Um, but I'd just love to hear from you guys what your thoughts are. I mean, I'll probably do them anyway once in a while. And if I do start, like, doing them regularly, it won't be all that common. I'll just do it more as, you know, a knife needs to get taken apart. Um, but if it's one I haven't done before, I'll throw one um you know probably one of the next few ones i'll do will probably be the pm2 this is just the standard s31 but now that i hear they're doing a 40 an s45 version um that isn't just a sprint run but actually for production i guess they're replacing the s30v so i'll have to try and pick one of those up when i get the cash because it's probably not going to be very cheap but let me know what you guys think. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, please remember to comment, like the video, subscribe. And to please check out some of the other videos or look me up on Instagram. It's the same name. It's Gnarly Knives. 
you'll be able to kind of get see some other stuff I'm doing. Um, you know, I'll post about plants and other stuff. It's not just knives I post on there. But also, too, once in a while, I'll post, like, little, oh, hey, this knife will be coming up kind of video. And I also will post up, when I do post a video, I'll, um, I post reminders up that a video has been made. So if you don't get that notification. But uh, thank you guys for tagging along. And remember to keep carving and stay sharp. Peace.